the CNS system, which is called the central nervous system, and there's also the PNS system, which is called the peripheral nervous system. The CNS system is talking about the brain and the spinal cord. The PNS system is talking about the sensory and the motor nerves. So these sensory and motor nerve is external of the brain and the spinal cord. In the sensory nerve, it could be anything. It could be, it could be that your eyes saw something like a bear or a tiger. It could be that your nose smells something like something is burning. It could be that your foot touch on something. It could be that something touch your skin, crawling on your skin. Whichever it is, the body senses it, and it is sensed through the sensory nerve. After it's sent to the sensory nerve, through the spinal cord, up to the brain, the brain interprets it to see what it is. Then it sends back down an action and say to the motor, sorry, to the motor nerves, for the motor nerves to act. The motor nerves, we have somatic, and we have parasympathetic and sympathetic. The mo For the motor nerves with the somatic, it tells if it is something that, if it's something that touches your skin, that is crawling on your skin, and you, the brain interprets that something is touching your skin, you actually brush it off. That's motor. If your hand touches something that is hot, you actually remove your hands. That's motor. If you smell something burning, you actually run to the stove to turn off the stove. That's motor. So the interpretation, then we have control over the motor nerves, and that's what we do to when we get the interpretation of what's going on. Another part of it, too, is the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. In the sympathetic, it could be that you sense, you get the stimuli, there is danger, whatever it is. It could be smoke. It could be a tiger. It could be a lion. It could be whatever it is. You sense it. It goes to the spinal cord, to the brain, and it is interpreted as something dangerous. The sympathetic will kick in. The eyes will dilate so that you can see better. The inhabitation or the inhabits flow of saliva will stop so you other things can be the main focus. The heart rate will increase. The heart rate will increase. And you'll see that your heart start beating faster. Blood pressure will increase. Not only that, is that the bronchioles will be dilated. Now you can breathe in and out deeply. Peristalsis will slow down. During fight or flight, whether you're going to fight or whether you're going to run, you can't stop to worry about the bathroom at that time. So this is going to slow down. The liver is going to convert glycogen to glucose, so the body is going to need it. Whatever you're going to do, if you're going to stand up and fight, you're going to need the energy. If you're going to run, you're going to need the energy, so the glucose is going to be needed. A lot of things that I talk about up top here comes off and works by the, the adrenaline, which is epinephrine, and the neoadrenaline, which is the neoepinephrine. The inhabits too, the bladder contraction is inhabited or inhibited. This is conducted by the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, so let me go over it again. So the peripheral nervous system is the system that does the action. Mm -hmm. They sense it, it goes to the brain and say, listen, what's going on? And then the brain say, you're under attack. And then the peripheral nervous system is the one that say, hey, move your hand, run, increase heart rate. So it deals with sending the signal to the brain, which is the peripheral system, which is called, part of it is a sensory, sending the signal to the brain. The brain interpret it, send it back through the spinal cord, and then the peripheral system is the one that say, okay, you need, after it get the message, then it knows that it needs to move the hand, it needs to run, it needs to fight, it needs to do whatever it needs to do. That's the peripheral nervous system. Under the peripheral nervous system is a sensory and the motor factor of it. The sensory system is the one that sends the message to the brain to be interpreted to say, okay, what's going on? It sends a signal and say, someone is trying to fight you, 
the motor system says, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And doing what it's doing is like either moving the hand, moving the feet, running, or it gets the body ready to run, get the body ready to fight. And that's where the sympathetic system comes in. All right, so a couple of things I want to tell you about the sympathetic. Now, here what happens now, after the person I dilates to get ready to look around them and to see what's going on, after the heart increases and the bronchial and dilates and all of that. If the person sense again that the bear is no longer there or whatever was causing a threat to them is gone, they're going to send the message. The message is going to send to the brain. The brain is going to interpret it and say, the threat is no longer there. So that's when the parasympathetic system kicks in now and everything is going to slow down. Now, the eyes are no longer going to be dilated. The eyes are going to become smaller. The pupil are going to become smaller. Mm -hmm. Now, the saliva now is going to flow. The heart rate is going to slow down. The bronchioles are not going to be dilated. They're going to be constricted, not in a way that causes any problem, but they're not going to be dilated as they were in the sympathetic. Um, the Now, the bowel sounds come back. Now, the release of bile will continue on the release of bile helps with the digestion of fat. Then we have contraction of the bladder. The sympathetic area is the one that speeds up everything. Everything is on a, a fight or flight, looking what's going on. The parasympathetic is the one that slows down, that everything comes back to normal. It's the eyes that are going to see that the bear is no longer there, send a message, interpret it and say, oh, the bear is gone or there's no longer danger. The message is going to come back down and say, no longer danger after it's interpreted. And then the muscle, the, the that area is going to kick in the peripheral nervous system and say, act now. And the action for this is that there's no longer threat. The pupils are no longer dilated. Saliva start flowing. The heart rate slows down and all of that. So depending on what the body sends through the peripheral nervous system on the outside, that's how or that's how the body's going to act. For we, for us, we do not identify that um, pretty quickly. We not. What do I mean? What am I saying? I should say. What am I saying is that when something burns us, we don't think about moving our hands. We move our hands on the on the blink of an eye. So it happens so fast. So we don't even know. But in reality, what's happening is that we our hand touch it or touch a hot plate our sensory nerve, pick it up fast to send it to the brain. We interpret it and we move our hands and it happens in seconds. But that's how it works. Now, I want to draw your attention to the, um, the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland is a very important gland also in the fight or flight. Um, so a cross section will look like this. Oh. Not very pretty. Well, look something like this. And the outside of the adrenal gland is a cortex. The inside of the adrenal gland is actually the medulla. The outside of the of the adrenal gland is called the cortex, and it produces a couple of things. It actually produces the um, androgens, which are sex hormones. It also produces mineral corticoids, and then we have the glucocorticoids which actually tell the liver to convert glycogen to glucose or vice versa. In the middle of the adrenal gland, this middle here, we have the medulla. And the medulla is the one that actually um, produced the epinephrine and the neopinephrine. Now, the neopinephrine and the epinephrine is known for the fight or flight, to initiate the fight or flight response. And the fight or flight response is what we talk about, dilation of pupil, inhibit of um, saliva flow, accelerated heartbeat, dilated bronchioles, inhibit peristalsis and secretion, convert glyc the, 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 epi the epinephrine and the neopinephrine is responsible for that. Now, how I, what I do to remember this, uh, because it's in the middle, I say the deeper it goes, the more excited it gets. 
So if the more deeper it goes, the more exciting it gets. Excitement meaning pupil dilation, increased heart rate when someone is excited, they start, you know, breathing harder, uh, 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 and all of that when they're excited. Keep in mind too, I want to show you this, that when someone have a, a allergic reaction, when someone have an allergic reaction, you know what happened? Bronchial is constricted. Say they're allergic to peanuts or they're allergic to iodine. Their bronchial is actually constricted. So by giving epinephrine, epinephrine dilates. Okay? Epinephrine mm -hmm. dilates. Mm -hmm. Not only that, during a anaphylactic shock, a shock, they'll have decreased blood pressure. What epinephrine does is increase the heart rate and also cause the vessel to constrict. And when the vessel constrict, blood pressure, because you know, if you have a vessel like a hose, the bigger the hose, the lower the pressure. The smaller the hose, the higher the pressure. Okay? So when they give epinephrine, when they give epinephrine, what it does, it dilates bron the, the bronchioles because that's what it does in the body naturally. It increases heart rate and it causes uh, the vascular system to contract, which will increase heart rate. So look at this also. Remember I told you that on the heart, on, in the heart, there are beta-1 receptors. Mm -hmm. In the lungs, there are beta-2 receptors. How I remember this is that we have two lungs and we have one heart. So that's why there's beta-1, 2. In order for the heart to increase, epinephrine is the one that stimulates and causes this to occur. So it goes on the beta-1 receptor, causing the heart to increase, increase in heart rate. Have you ever heard of a medication called beta blocker? Those are beta blocker. So what they actually do is block the effect of epinephrine on the receptors of the heart. So if it blocks the beta-1 receptor, what do you think is going to have, what do you think the effect is going to be? Why when people are on beta blocker, they need to check the pulse because it slows the heart rate down. Another side effect of the same beta blocker, they'll tell you, is that beta blocker People who have COPD, yes, and asthma, asthma right. and all of that should not take beta blocker because remember, epinephrine actually dilates the bronchia, correct? And if you block it, mm -hmm. it may cause it to constrict. So that's why most beta blocker medication are contraindicated for people who have COPD, asthma, um, emphysema, and so forth and so on. 